Overpowered magic specialists exist, why don't governments extensively use them? I was thinking of creating mage specialists for my medieval fantasy world, incredibly powerful and or skilled in only a few spells, who could do some pretty overpowered, shortened to op, things. But some of the concepts I keep thinking of would logically break the medieval setting, threatening to create plot holes or inconsistencies that I want to avoid. What are some good reasons why this world's governments wouldn't extensively hire, train, or conscript op magicians? To add on, it would take a mage with exceptions a good chunk of time average 10 years of education or apprenticing to be considered a specialist in a field of magic. The learning curve wouldn't be anything insane, requiring only an understanding of the prerequisites and a working brain, just like anything else. They are mainly specializing in technique or control, meaning their abilities can't be acquired by items, power-ups or any easy cop-out. If they are truly a specialist, they can use their magic without major difficulty, for less mana and in very creative and ingenious ways. I would like to have a handful of specialists occupy every city, and at most one specialist every several villages. To clarify, I want them to be the only entities who can use magic where they live in that way, including governments. For the reason I'm looking for, governments rarely hire or conscript these specialists, and don't have programs to teach state majors their methods. Specialists might be willing to work with secret societies or private institutions, like guilds or private schools, but mostly work at the individual level, teaching their successes mostly. Any suggestions would be greatly appreciated. Governments and military leaders require obedience and loyalty. If they have high-powered weapons, they want the people who wield those weapons to fire them when and where they are told to, without argument or hesitation. Soldiers who disobey orders are punished harshly, dereliction of duty, insubordination, even treason. The penalties for such are strict and severe. However, an overpowered magic user OPMU would be too powerful to feel any need to thoughtlessly obey the chain of command. I mean, if an OPMU can blow up an entire city with a wave of his wand, but refuses to do it when ordered, how exactly do the higher-ups punish him without risking getting blown up themselves if they try? You can model OPMUs on high-level academics, opinionated, self-assured to the point of arrogance, far more interested in petty disputes with other OPMUs than in the politics of the world, and disinclined to take nonsense from anyone at any time for any reason. OPMUs won't do anything unless they want to, they have too much raw power to be controlled or threatened effectively, and successfully attacking one OPMU risks incensed retribution from other OPMUs who may not have liked the first OPMU, but thoroughly resent that normal people would dare to interfere with magical issues in such a coarse way. As Tolkien put it, do not meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are subtle and quick to anger. OPMUs would snort in disdain at the suggestion they should behave like good soldiers and do what they are told, and no one with half a brain wants a pissy OPMU thinking bad thoughts about them.